Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Out of Darts, we are going to go over the Nerf Mega Moto Strike. Let's get going. Since the moment I got into this hobby, I wanted this blaster. The Strife is the clear, most popular blaster that's ever existed for modders. And I always wondered, why isn't there a Mega version? Because Mega's really, really cool. Um, the oldest Nerf darts are much closer to Mega than they are Elite, so there's kind of a heritage thing there as well, which I really like. The Mega Moto Strike is essentially a Mega Strife in almost every way, with the exception of ergonomics and design aesthetically. It's got a 10 round magazine, which is absolutely massive. I honestly cannot imagine carrying a whole stack of these like I would an Elite Blaster, let alone compare it, it size-wise to a short dart blaster. It's hard to make the case for Mega, but as Adriana Foam Blast would say, it's really fun shooting hot dogs at people. <laughs> So this blaster is semi-automatic, of course, just like the Strife. Basic rev trigger. Overall, I think it's a pretty neat blaster. I'm a little disappointed on the comfort. Uh, for some reason, it seems like every blaster that Hasbro releases is less comfortable than previous generations. The Strife trigger and, and rev and the actual grip feel a lot better than this for my adult hands. That said, this is a toy. It is meant for... 12 to 16 year olds or probably younger and their hands will fit just fine in here. It's powered by 4C batteries and as you can hear mine came with a free screw. I have not opened this for reference. This, this just came like this. So after you've thrown your six dollars of batteries in here or whatever depending on how bulk you bought them First thing we're going to do is upgrade this thing to a LiPo to make sure we aren't paying for those C batteries. But after we're up and running, we've got a basic mag. Um, the shape of the Mega Darts does not allow these to be press fit, so this is a bit of a slow loading one at a time. I'd actually say this is more difficult just due to the size. You're not going to be able to load as many darts per minute or per second as you would on an Elite Blaster. All right, so I've got 10 darts loaded up here and we are going to go ahead and, ooh, that actually feels pretty good. Because of the size, it's got a very firm, nice tight mag release here. What have I done? I broke it already. You forget about locks when you don't play with stock blasters very often. The door was slightly open. Oof. So obviously we're working with a larger cage and flywheels, and that's going to be one of the first things we're probably going to have to replace, uh, depending on sizing. Uh, let's listen to that spin-up time there, though. It's almost four seconds to full. So right off the bat, the performance is about what you'd expect. It does not seem to hit as hard as the... Springer variants on the Mega Blasters, the Megalodon, for instance, hits much harder than this in stock configuration. Those follow-up shots were very, very slow, barely making it to my door, only 20 feet away. That said, we know this is not how we're going to keep it, so I'm really not criticizing the performance because I don't care. I'm just going to mod it and make it better. I think right off the bat, these motors are probably going to do just fine on 3S. And given that this is six volts now, I think jumping up to double that will probably be okay. But I will do some testing and probably break one and see what happens. Ergonomically, as I said before, it's not great, but it does look really, really cool. I think it's like a nice cross between the rapid strike with the carry handle up top and the foregrip along with the strife mechanics inside. As usual, Hasbro's cheaping out and we got no paint on this side. We just get... Two touches of paint, white and gray. This is, of course, the actual color of the plastic, but that's nothing new. I would like to see if someone 
comes up with a full auto option for this blaster because that could be pretty interesting as well, assuming that we can get the flywheels spinning faster to propel those darts a little quicker and catch up between shots a little faster. This is a $40 blaster. I think considering all of their recent releases, that's a pretty good value. Uh, the Dart Zone Pro has kind of skewed all value with a $50 amazing blaster, so it's hard to compare directly but I do think it's a pretty competitive offering in the current marketplace. As far as mods on this blaster, it's definitely going to take that rewire to a LiPo. I'm assuming we're going to end up replacing the cage, at least the cage if not the wheels, to tighten up the spacing to get a little more FPS. And I'm certainly going to replace at least this rev trigger and mag release. I would like to see a larger mag release on here, much like the foam blast ones for the Strife that I sell in the shop. And this rev trigger is just painful. It's just not comfortable. So we'll replace that with something a little more comfortable and something that grabs a little more on an adult hand or a larger hand. You can see where my hand rests here. It kind of cuts the middle of the finger rather than supporting the entire middle finger for rev. Overall, I think it's a really fun offering. I think people are going to have some fun with it. It's not going to be competitive on the field in the same way that, say, a rapid strike would be. You're not carrying as much ammo. The mega ammo doesn't fly any farther. But in a game type where you've got a specialty unit where mega actually does something special, it's going to make a big difference. And I think that's going to be really, really cool. I will have a lot more coming up for the mega moto strike. We will definitely get some mod parts on the shop. I've got a few other big projects for the Nexus and other blasters like the uh, Adventure Force line to do first, but this is definitely on my list and we will have more later in the year. Thanks so much for watching. Do hit that like and subscribe button down below. That is seriously the only way that anybody continues watching these videos because YouTube is pretty punishing when it comes to spreading your videos around these days. Until next time, I'm out of darts.